Airplanes? Well, this airplane was built in Hatfield, England in 1940 as a military trainer and it trained the pilots in the RCAF to, to fly Spitfires, Mosquito Bombers. But the Tiger Moth is really the J-3 for the rest of the world. More people learn to fly in a Tiger Moth airplane than, than any other airplane built. These were built in six countries and all the British Commonwealth countries were building them. This particular one was built in England and when I found it, it was in 400 cardboard boxes, at least. Well, how do you go about putting an airplane like this together when I mean, you don't have any instructions? It was my first Tiger Moth project. I had a lot of time, and probably more time than since, but I did a lot of research. I uh, First thing I did was find every book available on the airplane and the engine. Uh, you have to learn the history of the airplane first to begin to understand what made it what it is. So it's also a history lesson uh, for me. Uh, I could have done better if I'd have been uh, uh, more schooled in world military history. It would probably helped a little bit. But I'm learning things uh, every day. I use the internet a great deal uh, for research, believe it or not. Uh, there's a lot on there. And um, so I got the airplane home in boxes, photographed everything. Uh, tried to take an inventory. They didn't use exploded parts diagrams back then. There was the, a, a name of a part in a book. And it's a different name in England than it is here. Even though it's English, it's, uh, these are not called wings, they're called planes. And that was just the beginning of the education. Uh, the fasteners are 100% different than on American built airplanes. And uh, so we began, I began, the meticulous work of piecing these things together and trying to get it to come into the form that you see it now. It took me a couple of years. Tell us about the engine in this airplane. Well, I also uh, do engine work, and that really makes the airplane what it is. Um, without a good power plant, you don't have much. So I spent a lot of time... spent a lot of time measuring. I love that. Uh, Engine-wise, I spent a lot of time measuring. And what kind of engine is it, Mike? This is a, a 6.2 liter inverted four-cylinder, um, 145 horsepower engine, and a uh, red line on it's 2,400 RPM. And um, uh, so it's a, a really kind of a John Deere tractor engine, and it's air-cooled, and it's upside down. Give us the performance figures on this airplane. Well, at uh, stall speeds of 45 miles an hour and uh, climbs out at about 60 and cruises at 85. Uh, loops real nice at uh, 100. Um, 120 gives you a great big loop and 90 it's a little flat and egg shaped. Uh, but as far as landing, it just kind of lands itself. I use a tail skid on this airplane and uh, that helps keep it go straight uh, down, the, down the runway and I've not once had to touch the brakes on landing uh, and uh, I've got about 140 hours on this airplane now. It weighs 1,269 pounds empty and uh, can easily take a 300 pound person in the front cockpit. So would it take a big, well we're not both, <laughs> we're, we're kind of big guys and it, both no problem. Yeah, there puts us right just, what is it, a tenth of a pound under gross weight. <laughs> so uh, it's, a, it's a neat airplane, everyone should have a chance to experience a tiger moth and even seeing it fly past um, is part of that experience. Hearing the engine run, it idles about 180 RPM. Um, the uh, spark retards on this, uh, it's hooked to the throttle so when you pull the throttle back the magneto spark is retarded so it'll idle very slow and the whole experience of a tiger moth is unlike any other airplane that's here. It's uh, really takes you back into the World War I era and feel and smell of an airplane, but yet it was built in 1940, but it's still really a 1920s airplane. Um, a lot of wood in it, uh, lots of pieces of wood. The whole tail group is wood. There's not a piece of metal in it. So you're relying on good design and good glue. Um, they are. This particular airplane has a, a rare piece of equipment on it called a blind flying hood and that hood was used to train instrument pilots uh, it, it just trained them to keep their wings level 
pretend to know they could follow the compass and go in a straight line. They, they really couldn't go from airport to airport. Uh, but they the instructor sat in the front seat of this airplane and they'd close the rear hood and the pilot, the student, would learn how to keep the airplane upright. Get you out of a cloud. Oh, it sure would. Get you out of a cloud. And, and it teaches you to ro rely on your instruments, which you're one of the first things, the basic thing you're supposed to do. We want to invite people to take a look at your website. Sure. MikeSanger.com. Take a virtual tour. And, and besides the tiger moth, which uh, you're, you're becoming the tiger moth guy in, in our country, but uh, uh, you're involved in a lot of different antique and classic airplanes. Yes, uh, the tiger moth is, is a delightful airplane. I tell people it flies like a butterfly, and I've not seen anyone get out of it that doesn't have a great big smile on their face. I take a lot of first airplane rides, a lot of first biplane rides. I'll tell you, Lee Bottom Airport, just like stepping back in the 40s here. Oh, there's nothing like it. Like I say, the history's here, the grass is here. I spent the night here, the fog was here, the deer were on the runway. It just doesn't get any better than Lee Bottom and, and Rich Davison puts it on and lives here and owns a place and that's all he works on for 364 days is, is the Lee Bottom experience. And if you've got a tailwheel, airplane, fabric, whatever, uh, you need to come and see this. And, and we're right next to uh, historic Hanover and uh, Madison, Indiana is nearby. It's a, it's a great place. Uh, but if you have a tail dragger, this is where you need to fly to. You fly here. The other thing you do is late in the evening and the first thing in the morning, you fly down the river valley. And uh, it's like going over and flying down the Rhine River Valley. People a lot of times will travel thousands of miles to different countries. They have to even use a passport. We can go back in time right here. We have an old airplane or even an Aronka Champ. We can take off on grass and just head out right over the river and we can, um, in this particular stretch, we can go from here to Louisville, Kentucky. There's not one power line going across the river. We can fly from here to there and back and I do it every time I come down here. I take someone up in it. It's, uh, it's my highlight of the year. Um, it really is. Thank you, Mike. Oh,